Listen, you can't even tell people that you like Panerai these days. It's like admitting that you love Nickelback. I mean, this is a company that can't seem to do anything right in the past few years, and at this point, hating on Panerai, it's almost fashionable. And I should have no business wearing a 44 millimeter watch, but it was my birthday last week, and I just wanted to do something stupid. So I went to the AD, and the moment I tried this watch on, I thought, if this is wrong, I don't want to be right. Hey guys, I'm Max, and this is Watch Crunch. So it's March, and that means the members of Watch Crunch are partaking in the annual microbrand Watch Madness. It's a tournament that will run till the end of the month where 64 brands this year are facing off decided by your vote. So come root for your favorite brand. Okay, let's first acknowledge that Panerai has had its share of problems over the last decade or so, but let's also acknowledge that nothing really looks like a Panerai. In a world of copycat watches, it's refreshing that this company has stubbornly held steady on their design language since like the earliest 1930s prototypes. Though Panerai has recently relented a bit by introducing smaller case watches, a Panerai generally will look like a Panerai. But how has such an illustrious company accrued such a bad rap sheet? Well, let me give you three examples. There was the infamous PAM 318, a limited edition watch that retailed for like over 5K, shipped with a completely unfinished Unitas movement. Their excuse? There's no display case back, so who cares? Panerai was also in the business of removing decorations and sometimes features like hacking on certain movements. The reason? A movement update, whatever that means. Lastly, and this one really kind of drove me up the wall, the new 38 millimeter Luminor Due, complete with the signature crown guard, has not 100, not 50, but 30 meters of water resistance. Come on. A company that identifies itself with professional diving, making a dive watch that you could barely wash your hands with. What a joke. These movement changes made Panerai a prime target for counterfeiters, and sure enough, the market got flooded by them. Now, actions speak louder than words, and with one mishap after another, Panerai for many years was signaling to their diehard fans, the Paneristi, that they could care less about the details, and they prefer to save a few bucks than to preserve their brand identity. I myself accidentally bought a fake Panerai a couple years ago, you might have seen that video, which I've since turned into a coffee table. You might have seen that video, I'll put them in the description. Despite that, I still have a soft spot for Panerai. Because people are allowed to make mistakes, as long as they correct them. And with such a great story of like, torpedo riding commandos and Sylvester Stallone movies, I'm not ready to give up on Panerai just yet. So you want a Panerai. Now comes the hard part. Which one do you buy? Panerai's reference numbers can get dizzying pretty fast. And before we dive into why I personally chose the PAM 915, guys, do me a solid. Please drop a like for this video real quick. If you like videos like this, consider subscribing so you don't miss future ones. There are three lines within the Panerai catalog. The radio mirror is the most sort of true to the original 1930s watch, which was really a Rolex case pocket watch with wire lugs welded on. There is the Luminor, the one I have, called that because they switched from the toxic radioactive radium to tritium in like 1950. This is my favorite because of the signature crown guard, which has a lever that puts pressure on the crown for improved water resistance, 300 meters in this case. This look now pretty much defines the silhouette of a Panerai from afar. Lastly, we have the modern submersible line, which is a beefed up dive watch with a rotating bezel, looking like someone plasma cut a port off of an old submarine. Okay, so now that I've narrowed my search to the Luminor in the standard 44 millimeter case, it was time for me to dictate the features I wanted. First, I was looking for a sandwich dial. This was a dial making technique that instead of painting the numerals on, a luminescent plate was sandwiched behind the dial with its elements reliefed out. And the sandwich effect really adds a great level of depth and on an otherwise pretty simple looking dial, I'll take all the little Easter eggs I can get. Now, not all Panerai's have sandwich dials, so make sure you do your research. 
Next is the dial layout. The base watch, in this case, the 914, has all the numerals, the three, six, nine, and 12. Now I wanted the small second function partly to break up the symmetry and partly just to know that my watch is running as Panerai's don't otherwise have a central second feature. One bonus is that on the 915, the small second is painted bright white, which really pops against that matte black dial. The Panerai 914, 915, they have a healthy dose of Fotina. It's a pretty heavy khaki color, almost, too much, but I've already admitted that I love Fotina. I'm not embarrassed by it, especially on a vintage inspired watch. And this one doesn't seem to affect the luminescence one bit. Now, ever since my fake Panerai experience, I've decided that my next Panerai purchase will be from an AD complete with box papers, uh, warranty, and a handshake. So this meant buying something new and available now. And the feature that really kind of put this watch over the top for me is Panerai's new in-house movements. See, Panerai does listen. The P5000 found inside is a 21 jewel machine with a free sperm balance and an impressive eight days of power from twin barrels. So let me repeat that. It's not 80 hours, it's eight days. That's almost like 200 hours, making this sort of like a wind and forget kind of watch. The new movement is also just four and a half millimeters thin, slimming this case down to 13 and a half millimeters, including the dome sapphire crystal, which is paper thin by Panerai standards. This drastically improves the wearing experience. I mean, it still has a pretty long lug to lug of 53, but with downturn lugs, I can comfortably wear this watch on my six and a half inch wrist, which is really a surprise. Now flipping this watch over, we get just a solid case back. And I tried Evan, you're terrific, his Pan 111, I think that has a display case back that he really kind of fawns over. And I think this is where we disagree. To me, you know, a big old dive watch that's military inspired should probably keep its skirt down. Now Panerai also includes a rubber strap in the box and it's really nice. This thing, it's really beefy, barely tapers, uses screws instead of spring bars, and the rubber has these prominent ridges with the words Officine Panerai cast into it. A side note, I've learned a lot of Italian owning this watch just a couple weeks. Like, Officine means workshop, and Giorni means days, like eight Giorni or... Buongiorno. Buongiorno. All right, let's give the PAM 915 a crunch score. Um, the watch scores really high on its iconic, unwavering design. It's also got really solid finish. I mean, for such a simple looking watch, you can feel that it's just really well made. The new movement is a boss. And the history of Panerai, I think, is the stuff of legends. But to get all of this in one package, it's not cheap. Retail is just over 7K, so make sure you ask for a discount. But guys, what do you think of Panerai? Are they like out of the doghouse yet? Let's discuss on watchcrunch.com. I'll put a link to a longer thread in the pinned comments below. Stay classy. I'll see you in the next one.